What's up everyone and welcome back to Rob's Gaming Table. Today on the table we have a special video for you thanks to the folks over at Fantasy Flight Games. They have provided us with some spoiler cards from the upcoming Sands of Dorne Martell House Expansion Box for a Game of Thrones card game 2nd edition. Uh, if you're new here we do Game of Thrones uh, gameplay content from various tournaments and uh, local events uh, on this channel so subscribe if you want to support us here. Hit that like button you want to see more Thrones content and without further ado let's get to it I'm gonna give you my initial thoughts on these cards but I'd also like to hear what you guys think so make sure you leave comments below let me know uh, how these cards can be used if they're good if they suck whatever just let me know I am always curious we get the conversation flowing in the comments down below uh, and let's get to it. The first card we have is a Maester Kendry. He is a Martell character. He has two cost, intrigue, power icons, one strength. He's uh, unique and is non-loyal. He has the Maester trait and also has the ability, action, Neil Maester Kendry to reduce the gold cost of the next event you play this phase by two. So my initial first impressions, uh, I think he reminds me of a cheaper Paxter Red one. Uh, helps you with event reduction, except for he has to kneel, but I mean, only being two cost, he's like half the cost of uh, Paxter. Uh, not that you're going to play them both in the same deck or anything, but just reminds me of the same kind of card design is what I'm getting at. Um, I'd, I would play a couple of this guy in, in a deck that I'm playing like a Vengeance for Elia, maybe a uh, Put to the Sword. He definitely helps reduce the cost of those big events and can just uh, be a threat on the board while he's standing. Your opponent does not know uh, if you're planning on slapping a big event down on them to help swing the game. So it's just that fear of activation, you know, that threat of activation. I think he's very good for that. Um, he's also just a great cheap two cost character, uh, which is always good for, you know, set up and just killing for claim instead of killing one of your big six or seven costers. Um, but, uh, he also is, uh, non-loyal, like I said before, so he could work good in a banner. Uh, if other factions have big events like, uh, you know, taking the black forgotten by history or ours is the old way out of Greyjoy, um, Reducing them by two by kneeling a character uh, makes them a lot more affordable and makes their, you know, big splashy effects that we kind of laughed at before and said they're not really of value. But once you bring the cost down, does it make you think about playing those? All joking aside. Um, but he's another maester. Uh, that's another point. He's another maester for the uh, the conclave agenda. So we're getting a, a spread of maesters now, I guess. They're adding some more to the game. I don't know how well he would go in another maester deck with other maesters. I don't really play many maesters in my decks and I don't think uh, most people are really playing all the maesters really together or playing that agenda so uh, I'm not sure how well he'd work in there uh, the other thing uh, is this guy would be tight in a dark wings dark words agenda deck if we ever do get that agenda um, he would definitely help reduce the cost of events it would kind of open the spread more of you putting in the different one of events if the Agenda is similar to first edition. Uh, any kind of reduction on events would definitely help a deck that's running a high amount of events. And then, like I said, it opens up the spread so you can you can put in uh, more higher cost events and not hurt you as much. Uh, another card, interestingly, that came out recently, I think, was Shandy Stone. Uh, that Doran Stronghold uh, two cost location out of Martel, uh, which is also non loyal. Uh, it has the text after you lose a challenge as the defending player, Neil Shandy Stone, to choose and stand a character you control. So I think these work very well together. This can be like a little engine on top of like turning grounds or, or in addition to or instead of turning grounds in a deck uh, that, that relies heavily on reducing the cost of events. Um, maybe you could see this guy out of Targ, uh, to reduce the, the burn, uh, cards, you know, the two and the two cost burn, um, cards out of there, uh, to just, you know, obviously make them cheaper. Uh, the only problem with this guy being one strength makes him weak to that, uh, Targ burn plot. Uh, it would just wipe him away instantly as soon as that plot's flipped. So you might not be able to run that if you're running this guy. Um, and then this guy is also weak to that card. So if Targ is popular uh, at the time, you might not want to slot this guy in your deck, but I mean... A one of, why not? It's not like he's a crazy cost or anything. I think he's all right. Uh, but those are my thoughts, uh, as crazy as some of them might be. Um, let me know what you guys think. I'm sure some of you guys have insight on where this guy would go, what type of Martell deck, uh, but I'd like to hear those in the comments below.
And let's hop over to the next card. It is a three cost location, Martell Loyal. It is unique, Starfall. Uh, it has the Dorn and House Dane traits. It has the challenge action, Neil Starfall, to choose a character until the end of the phase. That character loses a challenge icon of your choice. So we have some icon removal. This theme has been pumped lately into Martell. FFG is definitely going in the direction of giving more icon removal cards, which I'm a fan of. I was a Martell fan in first edition. They had some of this icon removal, actually quite a bit of it. Some of it was playable, some of it wasn't, but it was always sprinkled in a little bit into most Martell decks, I felt. And I like dabbling in it uh, near the end of the game's life cycle, had some fun with it. But this right now screams to me, first impressions here are a house uh, with the red door uh, location. Uh, so you can start using some of the newer cards uh, that have come out recently or some of the ones that are coming out that we've seen spoiled, uh, like seven cost Doran or even uh, the, the six cost Viper that's already out. Uh, to help them with their abilities, you know, that involve characters with fewer than two challenge icons. This helps you remove them. And now, now with this on top of maybe some of the icon removing attachments or Dark Star or even Maester Caliot and Nymeria, this adding on to that can let you start hitting some of those three icon characters, the bigger characters that have all three icons spread out. Uh, you can start adding this on top of those to remove two of them to get them down to that single icon, which they need to be affected by Doran uh, or the Red Viper. And the other characters uh, that it could be hit by are Southron Messenger. Uh, he can uh, he can bounce characters back to hand that have fewer than two challenge icons. So uh, putting that that guy, uh, Doran and Red Viper, and I'm sure there's other stuff in the Martell box. Uh, those this this could go with those very well, and uh, it's some good spot control, and can definitely mess with your opponent's plans when they're trying to get a certain challenge type off. And you you know this from running Nymeria and seeing how Nymeria can be so powerful. But having that in a uh, in a location uh, from the start of the game, if you host the Red Door, this. Um, that is, is pretty huge. This could definitely build a whole deck type, uh, when this comes out and the Martell, uh, the rest of the Martell box, uh, we can definitely, I'm sure see some different Martell builds coming out and, and that control theme, uh, kind of fleshed out some more. The other, uh, the other card that it interacts with, I guess, uh, that would help, I guess, make better is the Prince's Pass. Uh, the two cost uh, location in Martell that I've only seen run once at a melee tournament by Rick. Shout out to you. And that has the reaction after you lose a challenge as defending player Neil Prince to pass to choose an attacking character until the end of the phase that character loses a challenge icon of your choice. Then if it has no challenge icons, you may sacrifice the Prince's Pass to discard it from play. So I can see this adding to that control of if you can get more icons removed and it's it's no longer just, you know, a, a little fun effect, a novelty, uh, as you will. Uh, now with cards like Starfall here uh, and top of these other cards, uh, you could definitely start removing all the icons from characters uh, pretty soundly and then discarding them from play, which is pretty huge. Um, you know, unless you're playing against someone who has Flea Bottom and they're just popping those characters back into play out of the discard pile. You know, maybe the discard pile is not the best place, place for them, but at least you can possibly, uh, you know, when things are all going your way, remove all three icons from a big seven cost dude, pop them out of play uh, with the Prince's Pass, and that'd be pretty crazy. Um, let me know what you guys think of other cool uh, cards that this removing icons uh, helps, you know, bump up their power level or the type of decks you'd like to see this in uh, or even the characters uh, you know that this could be used against to really nullify them uh, like other other uh, icon removal cards in the game i'd like to hear it in the comments below so let me know and uh yeah that's our two cards so uh thanks a lot for watching guys thanks again to fantasy play for sending these spoilers over and make sure you subscribe stay tuned we got tons more thrones content coming up on the channel so stick around for that and i will see you in the next video thanks a lot